Hey everybody, NecroVMX here. Welcome to my channel, and you are listening to Potato Cast. Um, so, you've probably been wondering where the hell I've been. You know, I did say that I was going to take a break off uh, in December, and that was initially going to be for like a week, maybe more. And then I said that I would take the rest of the year off and I would return in January. Here it is, January 8th, and I haven't uploaded any um, video game content. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to give an update on uh, what's been going on with me and where I'm at and everything. I'm going to give an update on Hitomi. I'm going to give an update on my dad. And then, uh, but first, before we get to any of that, and I am going to talk about the, you know, the, the one thing on YouTube that every YouTuber has been talking about. I might as well weigh in on that as well, because, you know, why not? I do have some things to say about that. But anyway, let, let's um, answer your questions and comments first from the last episode, which was the... don't even know what to call this one. I couldn't think of a good title that time. So, uh, there you go. All right, let's start off here. MM Zen says, I know Hitomi wants to stay in Japan because her grandparents are there. But it sounds like she might be better off just moving to the United States permanently. Um, yeah, it sounds that way, but it, unfortunately it's not the case, because I've talked to her about it, and, I, and I've sort of hinted at it. Um, you know, well, I haven't hinted at it, I've outright said that maybe you should stay, and, and she's not willing to. And I'm going to explain her reasoning. And I also had the thought of maybe her, her, her brother going back to Japan with her... Because I, I just think that they're better off together than apart, you know? Uh, let me tell you that, that her whole family, and, and I'm sorry, Hitomi, if, if I'm saying anything out of line here. I mean, I've, we've talked about these things between us. I don't know if, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to step too far out of line in, uh, for public. But, you know, her family is kind of a mess. The only, the only people in her family that are worth a damn are her and her brother, it seems, you know? I mean, there was her mother, but her mother passed away. So, you know, she's got a father and a bunch of cousins, and there's a stepfather involved, and, you know, they, they, they just, they're just assholes, you know? They, they, they're just dicks. And uh, here's the thing, you know, like, uh, she's... Okay, so she, at first she... Because I brought this up, and she said, well, I'm not a citizen. And I said, okay, well, here's the thing. Because she doesn't really know United States law like I do. I said, if you're parents were citizens then you are even if you weren't born here you don't have to have been born in the united states to be a naturalized citizen you can be a naturalized citizen having been born in japan if your parents are both you know are, are uh, citizens or her dad is definitely a citizen and you know her mother lived in the united states for you know a long time i think um but it comes down to other things first of all japan unless you're grandfathered into this, and this goes back to, I think, the mid-'80s, um, you, you can't have Japanese citizenship and another country citizenship. They won't let you have dual citizenship, so she would have to renounce her Japanese citizenship, which is something that would be... That, that's asking a hell of a lot for her to do that. Another thing is... Um, she doesn't really speak English. I mean, she types it just fine, but, you know, she's she's not comfortable actually speaking it. And that really, really, really cuts down job opportunities in America, particularly a place like California, where immigration is such a touchy issue. Um, you know, you, being able to speak, you know, Japanese is not a big help in California, I mean, if she spoke Spanish, she might have some some luck getting a job in Southern California, since there's a, a large Hispanic community down there. But you know, the, you know. Also, there's the fact that like she doesn't really have a place to live. Her father and her don't get along. The only reason he's letting her stay there now is is because it's temporary. Because she's going to be flying back to Japan. You know, her her dad cares about everybody in the family except for her and her her brother. So it her brother Jamal. She has other brothers, but the brother that I've spoken of many times. So, you know, and then I talked about, well, what if Jamal came back to, because he's got it rough too. Like his situation is, is, is almost as bad as her. She says it's worse. I don't exactly agree with that, but you know, it's not something that I'm willing to sit and argue about. His situation's almost as bad as hers. So I said, well, what if he came back to Japan with you? He speaks Japanese and, and you know, whatnot. 
And she said that, no, it, it just wouldn't happen because he's black and he's a foreigner. That's two strikes against you right there. So, um, yeah, there's there's issues there. I know, like, what you're saying, man, and, and you, you got a good thought there, but and I, I, I thought the same thing, and so did Tanya and a few other people, and we, we all brought this up, but it's just it's just not feasible. All right, Berserker0001 says, hashtag potato, Hitomi's landlord is a fuck sock. I agree. But at least he isn't a child-raping pissant that honestly needs to be force-fed 12-gauge... You spelled gauge wrong, but uh, I'm going to go with it because I like what you're saying. 12-gauge dragon breath rounds up his arse. Uh, is that a thing, dragon dragon breath rounds? Is that something that you can put into a, a shotgun? I'm going to have to... I, I'm just curious about what is a dragon breath round. Because I'm, I'm Googling it right now. So it's an incendiary effect round for 12-gauge shot. Oh, it basically turns your... Um, it, it into like a flare. It it it, it it's magnesium uh, pellets and it's oh wow, that looks cool. Yeah, he needs that up his ass though. Um, after getting giving ugh, after getting pile driven by 14 dozen 1080 carbon steel razor edge drill bit piston powered dildo going at 700 horsepower. Man, you got a lot of knowledge about some fucked up shit, man. Don't at me, bro. Seriously, to the sackless wonder that is literally holding two bits over Hitami's head, do the world a fucking favor and dust yourself. And actually, here's a good time to give an update on that guy, because, uh, you know, he's left her alone on Twitter, but he's taken to Facebook, because uh, she, she said that, you know, I asked her, because uh, she said uh, he he messaged her, and uh, he didn't, you know, try to say too much of anything, but he said something like, is that asshole still bothering you? So he's still pretending that I'm not talking about him. You know, he went on Facebook and he messaged her. She's not friends with him on Facebook, so it's sort of a thing where uh, she gets the message on her phone and it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, what do you call it? I, it, it? It's like this person wants to contact you on Messenger kind of thing and you can decline it. And she wound up declining it, so she didn't have the message anymore, but she saw the preview and it was, is that asshole still bothering you? And I said, give me, give me his Facebook name because this guy is trying to pretend like he's not the guy. I will come after him. And she's like, well, I already I already got rid of it. I say, if he bothers you again, I want to know about it. But I don't I, I don't know that she's um Oh, that was that's Tanya. I actually gotta talk about Tanya too. Um Yeah, I don't know that, you know, she wants me to know who he you know, his Facebook account. You know, like I know who he is, but like I know who he is on Twitter. I know who you are, man. But um, I was like, I was just going to yell at him right then. And she's like, no, don't do it. You know, well, she didn't say no, don't do it. But what she said was, uh, oh, I got rid of it. But I'm thinking you you can link me to his Facebook. But because um, he's he, what he does on Twitter. Let me tell you what this guy does on Twitter. He changes his name like every other day. So, he, you know, he, he, he thinks he's well hidden. But I know who he is. So let me tell you, uh, you, you're telling that line, man. I'm telling you, don't. Don't fucking messenger again. Don't say, oh, yeah, that guy that Necro was talking about in Potato Cast sounds like a real dick. It's you. Okay, just stop it. Just stop it. Uh, so anyway, let's let's move on. Uh, I lost this, the tab here. Okay, so dragon breath and dildos and whatnot. Uh, okay, yeah, let's move on. Bio Phoenix, thanks for the message, though. I, I agree with everything you said. Bio Phoenix says, sorry to hear about all this. I know I have not commented on most of the recent Potato Cast, but it's really hard for me to come up with anything to say. Damn, as much as I don't like those Twitch whores, the people who give ridiculous amounts of money for something so minor is just pathetic. Yeah, you know, um, I don't really, like, I know that some people really hate the booby streamers and they get really mad about it. Like, like, Atomi doesn't really like the booby streamers. I don't really care for what they're doing. But at the same time, I, they don't bother me because I don't watch them. It, it's sort of like this thing that I know is out there and uh, I know it exists. I, I, I think it's hilariously pathetic to give money to twitch streamers who show their cleavage you know because they're showing their cleavage especially giving like eight hundred dollars and then telling hitomi you can only give her 15 if she sleeps with you and records a four-hour video you know sticking a dildo up her ass it, it's pretty ridiculous you know you're, you're you're being a dick at that point but um the actual booby streamers don't bother me much because they're they're just trying to make money and it, it's not all that different it, it's not all that different in concept than if they went to a strip club and danced there, you know, for money. And it's a whole lot safer for them. So I, that doesn't bother me that much. 
Um, but what bothers me is the people that give them ridiculous amounts of money and then at the same time, you know, for nothing, for nothing. And then at the same time, they're saying to Hitomi, I want you to fuck me and I want you to record four hours of video of you jerking off and saying my name, but I'm only going to give you $15 for it because I think you owe me is a pretty ridiculous thing. And, and I didn't mention this last time because I was very upset. I was very angry at this guy. I'm trying so hard not to say his name. Um, I was very angry at him. And I didn't mention that like one of his tricks is to sort of subtly gaslight her in a way. Uh, like when he found out that she was in California, he, he said something like, uh, what did he say to her? He messaged her. This was before last week, by the way. He said, um, oh, I saw you by the such and such, so I know you're around. Um, we should meet up so you could so you could keep your promise to me and and she's like i said what promise and she's like oh the promise to to fuck well to fuck him and to record all this stuff and she said i never promised him anything he just said that you know he would pay me for it and i you know he's trying to make her think that she promised and that she has to live up to uh some bargain which is uh which is pretty ridiculous it's like you know she knows that she didn't promise you anything and you're an idiot so let's move on here. All right, so let's see. Let's move on here. Um, Stormcrow95 said, hashtag potato. I'm downright staggered and amazed by the hatred you expressed here toward that towards that roach. Uh, you know, I don't know. Roaches, roaches are better than him. It's jarring seeing someone as typically mellow as you unload like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't normally get like that, but that. That guy, you know, I'm, 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 I'm ready to kick his ass if he wasn't in California. If he was here in Pennsylvania, I, I'd probably kick his ass. I'd kick his ass good. So that aside, I'm hoping he leaves a tell me alone. Best wishes to her and hoping your life gets better than this by leaps and bounds the situation with your padre and such as we go into a new year. Well, thank you for the thoughts and the comment. I'm going to move on here. All right, Magitech09 says... Uh, the part where you talked about that Twitch streamer, you went a little too far, but it looks like you really needed to vent. First of all, I didn't go too far, and I wasn't talking about a Twitch streamer. I was talking about a guy who gave money to a Twitch streamer because she aims a camera at her tits. You know, not I'm not even talking naked tits. I'm not even talking, you know, topless, T-O-P-L-E-S-S, because they don't allow that on Twitch. I said what needed to be said, and as a matter of fact, I don't think I went far enough. I, I, like, honestly, Magitek, who are you to tell me where the line is? Like, who, what makes you the moral authority? You, you, you don't sound like you really know much about this. So that kind of bothers me. Um, I, well, I said the truth. But let me read the rest of this. He says, um, I'm really sorry you've been through so much. Like, man, I just want to hug you and Hitomi. I'll try to donate some money. I hope it helps. So I, I don't, you know, I don't have you. It's been a week. I, I really like. How do you think I went too far? That really bothers me when people say shit like that. I don't. I don't understand that. I really don't understand that. I'm talking about a guy who has been holding money over her head for o like over a year now. It's been. It's probably been more than a year. It's definitely been over a year, and he's offered her much more money in the past. And of course, she turns it down because she doesn't want to debase herself like that. She doesn't want to put herself through prostitution, and then you know. For him to just realize that she's now desperate and to lower the amount because he thinks he can get it cheaper, it's that he wants her he wants her to fu fuck him and record four hours of footage for his personal spank bank, which is probably full of illegal shit, by the way, based on what I know about this guy. And he only wants to pay her fifteen dollars, okay? But he's going to give nearly $800 to some chick that he doesn't know, is never going to meet, doesn't care about him, probably thinks he's an idiot, okay? So that's why I get angry. And if you think I went too far, I, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't care. Let me move on because I'm, I'm getting aggravated here. Uh, Big Ham Ohio says, hashtag potato. Well, I'm really glad your nephew nephews had a good Christmas all things considered, that's what is important. It is what's important for Christmas. Is it? You know, it is a holiday, uh, mainly for the children and the family. So I'm, I'm glad that they were happy. So uh, you left quite a bit here. Uh, as it stands with the living situation, I think living with your parents again is a good move for multiple reasons. Above all, spending time with your dad. You're a great son, and I know things haven't always been good between you two, but 
being there now will probably improve it more. You're probably right, by the way. You're, you're certainly right, and that's that's why I'm doing it. Well, that's one of the reasons I'm doing it, at least. I hope you find work soon, and and it's something worth your time and has benefits. I certainly fucking hope so, too. Uh, that would be nice. That is unfortunate about Liz Critics, but I understand because it has happened before. I think August 13th. August of 2013 was the last time. You you got a hell of a memory there. You're probably right. I wish you, your family, Jesse, Tanya, Julie, Payton, and Hitomi a great 2018, and hopefully next year we can all look back at this past few months and be like, well, that was a shitstorm, but we live. Regards, Will A. Hamar Jr. Thanks so much. He always sends me the nicest messages. Uh, okay, so here's the Game Master 8. Oh, this is another long one. Okay, let me read this. Hey, this is Bill, and yes, my aunt is one tough bird. <laughs> yeah, she sounded like it. We went through three rounds of chemo over the years before the stem cell transport. Uh, sent, oh wow, why can't I say that? Stem cell transplant was ever brought up. She's actually doing very well, though her immune system will have to be built up again from scratch. Well, that's um, that sucks, but hey, at least she doesn't have cancer. As for your job in the one potato cast, the wits end one, you covered your job briefly in a way that sounded a bit bad, with the one after that going into more detail about how bad it really was. Yeah, I, I forgot about that, that I did that when I was still working there. The reason I believe they may be incompetent is because of how you basically pointed out that they weren't handling their billing properly, which may end up, which many could end up concluding that their financials aren't well ordered either, but can have a negative effect when it comes to hiring and or paying employees. Well, the reason that they weren't handling the billing properly is because they didn't have a person to do it and that was me you know that was me and it and uh it was something that is interesting because i had taken a class on medical billing in the past and i had learned a lot about it but it, and i had some of that knowledge but i took that class and then nothing ever came of it and a long time passed and i forgot all it so a lot of it i did have to learn on the fly but that's what the internet is for. And I did start, it did start to come back to me and I started to remember a lot of that shit. So, you know, I was the billing specialist in a lot of ways. Um, there are other people there that can do billing, but they, they, they have to have like a, like a sheet in front of them and it, it takes them so long to do because they second guess everything and they, you know, because they're not people that specialize in billing. It's just, oh, this has to be done. So, you know, in the time that it takes them to do one claim, I could do a lot, really, because I I was I got good at it. You know, I got good at it. I was, I was handling so much shit. Um, so, I, like I said, I don't know. Maybe they are incompetent. A lot of people are saying that. I don't know. Uh, the financials, I, I think I, I can't talk about that much because there's a lot of shit I know that I can't say. But, um, you, you know, it's 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 interesting to me when I see money start to flow and i see you know where we went through where something like 30 percent of the claims that were going out were being paid to 90 percent of the claims that were going out were being paid and the other 10 percent the ones that weren't initially being paid were being followed up on by me which is something that nobody did before nobody ever followed up on anything um and then to be told they have no money they have no money they're in dire straits it 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 rang kind of weird to me. I don't. I'm not going to say that they were being deceitful, but something was going on, and they weren't willing to discuss it with me. So there you have it. There's more to your comment, though. So I'm going to move on here with the rest of your comment. So uh, he says, in the case of Atomi, it's extremely unfortunate that despite being in California, things are still looking pretty bad. Here's hoping her situation improves without her having to do anything that could put her in harm's way. Well, that's what we're all hoping for. As for her landlord, I'm pretty sure there's a special place in hell for idiots like him. Well, you know, I, I personally don't believe in an afterlife, but uh, maybe we should build one for him. And I even said that to Hitomi. I said, you know, I don't believe in hell, but maybe we should make one for him. And and she's she's funny because she defends him because she wants to blame herself for everything, but no, it's not her fault. As for the perverted imbecile who's been harassing Hitomi, here's hoping that twisted little twerp gets busted for something by the cops and ends up in prison. What a low life. Oh, I agree. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how he got off the child molestation rap. I know you're saying, oh, it was a misunderstanding. It was a misunderstanding. I don't know about that, man. You, you know, when you when you are openly on Twitter saying that you uh, you you, uh, you like uh, lowly con, is that what they call it? Where, where it's like anime, but it's like little girls, you know, and you, you're jerking off to Sakura from Street Fighter, and, you know, it's it's just, and you talk about this kind of shit, and then you say that, you know, you were accused of touching some little girl, but it was only a misunderstanding. It makes it kind of hard to believe. 
How is that a misunderstanding? That seems kind of weird. I have no questions to ask, but I do hope you, your dad, and especially Hitomi, will see some better times ahead in 2018. You guys do deserve a break. Boy, do we ever. Here's your better New Year, Nick Rob. Bill. Thank you very much, Bill. I enjoyed your comment. Uh, SSerpent21 says, hashtag potato. Like Flanders once said to Homer, if I can give you my heart, Homer, I would. If I can help either you or Hitomi out of your jams and problems, I would. Maybe one day I can win the lottery and buy you and Hitomi your own homes. Maybe a lawyer for Hitomi's brother to sue those slatterns. I don't know. I've never heard that word before. Fucking with them both. Oh, there's more. This guy offering Hitomi a measly $15 for a four-hour movie. Oh, no, he wants a four-hour movie and sex now because she's in California. Is asking you to get the hot fat doused on him like in Watchmen. Oh, that's a good reference. Hearing things like this makes me mad. Well, that, now you understand how I felt last week. The stream was great. Thank you for those, and I hope your dad does pull through. Hopefully Hitomi's landlord stops being a baka. In case anybody doesn't know, that's... Uh, baka is a, a... Hold on, somebody's texting me. Uh, no, I don't care about that. Uh, baka is a Japanese word that basically means idiot. And her life can get back to normal. As far as questions goes, I don't know. Was there ever a list critics list that you and, that you and either Tanya, Jesse, or Payton had gotten that you looked at and just said, no, this is too awful? Thank you and try to have a good day. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's been a bunch of those, but um, a lot of times I'll say it. on the, Like like when I got that the the list about the museums and, you know, there were a couple of lists um, about gayest cartoon characters. And, and that's all, those are all in the episodes where I said, yeah, we're not doing this, sorry. Uh, or sometimes it, it wasn't like that it was bad, but that it was just not appropriate for the show or that it wouldn't translate well to um, to voice. Heisen Soul says, hey, Nick, or hashtag potato. Either A, I misunderstood what you said about Hitomi's situation, or B, I wasn't listening to the whole thing, or C, a combination of both. In any case, I need to listen better. I hope this asshole is trying to bait her with $15 and is trying to stalk her gets fucked with a porcupine. Well, I, you know, I don't know, man. I, 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 if that happened, they just, I, feel, I would feel bad for the porcupine. You know what I'm saying? I would feel really bad for the porcupine. What did the porcupine deserve to do that? Uh, because he seems like the biggest lowlife in the world. He can fuck off. I'm done talking about that shit sting. Well, so am I, kind of. On a lighter note, I was thinking about what you were saying about Earthbound and going back to your Earthbound Challenge video from several years ago, where you said that people were really looking at this game with rose-tinted glasses. They have a fondness for it because it may have been their first RPG, hence why some people can't see flaws in the game. I agree it isn't a bad game, per se, but anyone who tries to argue that it's better than Final Fantasy VI in any way, shape, or form is out of their goddamn mind. I'm going to ask something a little different here. If you watch college football, uh, I don't, so sorry. Uh, so I'm going to skip the rest of the college football question. And he says, Happy New Year, man. I wish you a very happy 2018, Necro. Thank Take care. Thank you so much. Oh, here's MM Zen again. He says, I'm so sorry for the terrible pain you're going through involving your dad. My relationship with my own father was horrific, to say the least, so I feel extremely conflicted about it. I can't really think of anything to say that won't be a dumb platitude. Um, well, you know... I wouldn't worry about it, man. I mean, uh, look, me and my dad have had our differences in the past, and we've, we've been through some ups and some downs, and uh, th there's been some tension. But in the end, uh, we are family, and uh, I know that like where he's at now as a person is, is a lot better than what he was in the past. I know that where I am now as a person is a lot better than in the past. You know, we, we, we both had our flaws. We both had our problems. And, uh, you know, I'm... I'm Definitely not wanting to see him die, that's for sure. You know, eventually that's got to happen because, you know, nobody lives forever. But nobody wants to, you know, see somebody die from cancer. You know, he's 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 almost 70 years old at this point, you know, so he's, he's led a life. But I, I don't think he's ready to go yet. I really don't. The anime fan says, hashtag potato, I really wish Deadpool cancer treatment was a real thing that you and your family can be happier yeah, well, did you see how that turned out? He, 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 it, uh, I mean, they didn't go into it too well in the movie. I mean, they went into the fact that the, the see, here's the thing. I guess, I guess the movie kind of fucked it up. And I'm, I'm thinking of the comic book version of Deadpool, where the treatment for the cancer was what made him, um, made him ugly like that. And it also, um, it also is what made him kind of insane. So, but anyway, uh, questions number one: Do you believe? Like most people, that 2017 was a shit year for YouTube. Uh, I think 2017 was a shit year for everything. Number two, if nobody bought if nobody bought YouTube and all the controversial stuff still happened along with Adpocalypse, 
What are you talking about, man? Let me try. Okay, if nobody bought YouTube and all the controversial stuff still happened along with Adpocalypse that YouTube could yell at the advertisers for not realizing what would happen if they tried to ride the wave of success YouTube was getting back when it was getting starting to gain attraction. And that's a question? Dude, I don't even know if you're sa what you're saying, much less what you're asking. I don't understand that, man. And finally, number three, what do you think of the Fox-Disney mer merger and Fox-Marvel movie property coming to the MCU? Well, here's the thing. It's going to actually take a couple of years, and uh, it, it's not going to be right away. You know, they're only in the preliminary stages of this. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, the X-Men, and to a certain extent the Fantastic Four, are, are going to be, you know, that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is basically going to be whole again. But at the same time, I do like what uh, Fox has done with the X-Men. And, and here's the thing. Um, Disney now owns a whole lot of things. They canceled the they already canceled the next Alien movie. That's already not going to happen. you know. And now they own Planet of the Apes and a whole bunch of other shit. And while for the general purposes, I do trust Disney. They've done well with Marvel. They've done well with Star Wars. I, I'm still like, you know, thinking that we might be at a point where... You know, like, when I started this, nobody was bothering me. I start recording, and all of a sudden, everybody is bothering me. So, anyway, um... That's actually pretty funny. Uh, so, anyway... Um... I, I do have a feeling that maybe Disney is starting to become a bit too monolithic. That's my concern. And actually, I realized, I just looked at the time, and I realized that I have to uh, pause the recording real quick. You guys are barely going to know it, but I have to make a phone call. I have to call my sister real fast. So, hold on one second, guys. All right, got that taken care of. All right. So, anyway, um, let's move on to Josie Greg says, you know... I think you should really publish that bastard's name. You know, uh, you're not the only one to say it. Um, I, you know, I, I, I fought long and hard with myself about that, but um, here's the thing. Um, I don't want to be responsible for anything that might happen to this guy. Um, unless it's him getting arrested, because this guy probably should rot in prison. Oh, here's Payton. Payton says, hashtag potato. If I were you, I'd dox that son of a bitch cocksucker. If he's a pedophile, do it. No mercy. If he dies or gets shot and dead or gets arrested and anally raped to death like Jared from Subway. I think Jared's still alive. But, uh, screw it. You shouldn't feel guilty for that stupid son of a fuck, especially when he taunts our friend like he does. I'll continue trying to help her, though sadly trying to move, job switching, and getting rid of my roommates is eating up all my funds. Now, I understand, man. I know you're going through a lot of shit, too. Who isn't lately, you know? Uh, Mohammed Kowal, uh, uh, whatever, says, why am I sub to you? How, how the hell should I know? <laughs> You've never let me, left me a comment before. I don't know who the fuck you are. You, at one point, saw a video and you decided to hit this subscribe button. So, go fuck yourself, asshole. Uh, and finally, Captain N said, I'm sorry to hear that you're going through a lot, Nacre, especially with your dad, but I just hope everything gets better for you because it's a brand new year and we all have to at least try to think positive. Dude, I've been trying to think positive for the past five years. It hasn't helped, okay? So I'm not saying that I'm giving up on thinking positive. I'm just saying that, first of all, the calendar flipping over doesn't change anything, okay? It, you know, it mad, you know, like flipping from 2017 to 2018 doesn't mean anything. It, it, it literally has no intrinsic value. And secondly, to be honest with you, you know, like I said, I try, of course I try to keep positive. I know that. But we can do a, we can do a lot more than that. Anyway, he says, I just hope that you're all right in general and had a great Christmas and New Year's with family and friends. Oh, he was tolerable. Like I said, I, all I cared about was that the kids had a good time. So the reason that I have, that's it with the questions and comments. The reason that I haven't been uploading, like I said I would, is, is because I, I have to get out of here. I have to move. So I've been concentrating uh, mostly on that. I've been packing boxes and, and, and my sister's been helping me. That's actually who I called when I paused. Um, she's been bringing me more and, and just, just running them up to my parents' place. Cause I, I gotta, you know, like I, I paid rent for, you know, uh, and, uh, I'm, I'm good till the 15th. I gotta be out of here by the 15th. Otherwise I would wind up having to pay another, you know, $680 that I just don't have. So I've been scrambling to do that. Haven't had much time to dedicate to uploading videos, so sorry about that, guys. 
I really am. But I want to get myself all situated, um, you know, back there, and and then we'll upload videos. Um, the only shitty thing is another internet fucking sucks because I had it, you know, in the past. So, yeah. So anyway, um, you know, that's that's what's been up with me. Dad, uh, my dad, he's going to go to the hospital, actually, uh, day after tomorrow, which is the 10th, and get a biopsy. Now, he, here's the thing. This comes with a bit of bad news, because um, last time I was over there, they, they my parents really left a bombshell on me, and I'm, a part of me is a little upset that they didn't tell me this right away. They didn't tell my sister. She was very upset, but I kind of understand at the same time why they kept it from us. Um, so they did a scan at one point to see if, you know, because they, they know he has liver cancer. That's, you know, that's an obvious thing. But considering that the cancer is so prevalent in his liver, you know, that it's, 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 it's two-thirds of his liver. No, I'm sorry, it's, it's four-fifths of his liver, actually. It's four-fifths because it's, it's 15 centimeters of a mass of cancer out of a 20-centimeter liver, which is just, it's just crazy. Um... They did a scan to see if it had spread anywhere else, like kidneys or, you know, whatnot. And uh, apparently, and I wasn't told this initially, but I was told this recently, there was a spot on his lung, one of his lungs, rather, that they thought was cancerous. So he's going the day after tomorrow to actually get a biopsy on this lung to see if it is cancer. And if so, are there liver cells present in the cancer? And if anybody doesn't know why that's important, it's because if there are liver cells present in the in the lung tissue, that means that um, the cancer has become what is known as metastatic. And what metastatic means is basically a part of the cancerous growth has broken off and traveled elsewhere in his body and latched onto another part of his body. And that's that you could basically have liver cancer in your lung. So if this is cancerous, the spot that they saw on the, uh, I think it was an MRI, they have to know whether he has liver cancer in his lung, which means that it's spreading and that it's more aggressive than initially that, that I believed, or is it lung cancer? And then he basically has two forms of cancer at the same time, which is completely possible, by the way. Or, and this is the one that I'm kind of holding on to, is it scar tissue? And personally, um, we're going to find out in two days. Well, we're not going to find out in two days. You're going to have the biopsy in two days. I don't know how long it takes to get the results. Probably like another week or so, but um, from what I understand, I believe that it's lung, uh, uh, not lung cancer or liver cancer in his lung. I believe it's scar tissue because he had a previous surgery on this lung and then I know that these bright spots that show up in an MRI that look like they could be cancer could be scarring. Now the, the first doctor that they went to, the guy that was a dick, said that he believed the mass was cancerous, the, 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 the mass in his lung, but the new doctor at Sloan Kettering, which from what my mother has told me is a wonderful, wonderful facility, told me that um, once she mentioned that this was the lung that he had had uh, surgery on, which was about, um, I want to say about three, almost four years ago, it was almost four years ago, that it could be, and my mother was stumbling on the words, she said it could be, what was it, and I said scar tissue, and she said yes, yeah. she said it could be scar tissue. And I said, well, that makes sense, because he had surgery there. There's going to be some scarring. And uh, so they're going to do a lung biopsy, and it actually turns out that because he had surgery on this, and, and the nature of the surgery he had, which I don't believe I ever spoke of on uh, YouTube before, but, um, and I don't really want to get into it now, because it's not that relevant, but it's actually a good thing for the biopsy, because when you get a biopsy on your lung, there's a chance that your lung could deflate and collapse, which could cause all kinds of complications and could be very difficult to deal with. Um, 
But because he had this surgery in the past and that they had basically adhered his lung to the thoracic wall and that it is still there, stuck on the wall like that, that they that it greatly diminishes, like it's something like a 10% chance of that happening to begin with, and this greatly diminishes the chance, so it makes the biopsy a bit safer. So I guess we're just going to have to have the biopsy and find out what exactly is going on and, and what exactly is the nature of that, and hopefully it's just scarring. Um, you know, uh, the good news that came out of it was um, when he had had this surgery... Uh, about, like I said, almost four years ago, it was, um, he had an issue of, ha he had some ribs removed, um, and he had, uh, not the, the ribs around your rib cage, but the short ribs that are like on your side, and he had uh, decreased lung capacity, and they're saying now that his lung capacity is good, it's at 100% essentially. So, yeah. So that's the update on him. Hitomi... The update on her, she's still in California. She was actually supposed to leave on the 4th, That was, but she put off returning for a little while uh, because of everything that's going on. She is still in need of funds. Um, I don't want to get too much into the details of everything because I don't want to get upset, but she, she does need donations. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you guys, and I, I, I try to avoid asking on here because every time I ask on here, a couple of you fucking assholes go over to her channel and you send their nasty messages. And, uh, you know, uh, she's so over it, and I'm so over it, and, you know, like, they tell her, oh, uh, stop being lazy, just get a job, you know, like, like that's fucking easy. Uh, they tell her, um, after all that money, you shouldn't still be having problems. You don't, you know, you guys are, are idiots, okay? You, you know, the people who do that, you're fucking stupid. You don't know the situation. You only know what I say. You know what I mean? And, and I don't say everything because I'm not trying to put her whole fucking life on my channel because it's not necessarily my place. And I'm telling you, and, and a few of these people, by the way, she told me a few of these people were telling her that she's being selfish asking for money, even though she's she, I'm the one asking for, on her behalf, when I need money. And some of them even asked her for how to contact me to donate to me. And I said, well, what did you tell them? And she said, well, I, I gave them the, your your Twitter and your Facebook info. And I said, well, it's kind of funny because nobody's contacting me. So clearly, you, you're just talking shit. You don't care about me. You don't care about her. Just fucking leave her alone. What do you, you know, don't even click on these videos about her. Like, like, what are you doing? You know, what a loser who does that. You know, I'm telling you, um, if you trust me and you know that I'm telling the truth, and I know I'm telling the truth. I'm telling you she needs money and, and it's a bad situation right now. The only you know, the only thing that she can do right now is go home. And 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 uh, she has bills to pay and the you know, the bills come out automatically. Some of them do at least, and, and her account is a mess. And she's feeling really down about this and, and she doesn't need you guys coming over to her account and saying some lame fucking shit. I'm gonna put her um her PayPal in the description. If you want to donate some money, go ahead. If you don't, that's fine. Don't, but you don't need to be a dick about it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, all right. So I guess we should talk about Logan Paul because this is a this is a big thing. So Logan Paul, you know, is is basically causing the third adpocalypse here on YouTube, which I I couldn't give a shit about because I don't give a shit if I make any money off of YouTube. It's nice when I get a check. It really is. But you know. Here's the thing. It, it doesn't happen that often. When it happens, it's only like 100 bucks. It's like twice a year. Now it's probably going to be like once a year, if that. And uh, I, I've never been doing it for the money. I never have and never will. And I don't give a fuck if I make any money off of YouTube. And uh, a lot of people are like, oh, but it's causing content creators who are trying to make a living off of YouTube to suffer. And I said, and I, you know, somebody said this to me at a Kazarth meeting. They said, well, there's content creators who depend on YouTube to make a living. And I said, if you depend on YouTube to make a living, then you're a fucking idiot because it's not sustainable. It could go away in a flash and it, it fucks up your taxes. I'll tell you that much because they don't take taxes out of the checks that they give you. And to be honest, you know, when it does go away, not if, but when the, the, the partnerships, you know, the, the checks do go away or dwindles to the amount that you can't call YouTube your job anymore, 
nobody's going to be impressed when you try to get a day job and they look at your resume and it says you made makeup tutorials for the past five years. It's fucking ridiculous. But that being said, you know, Logan Paul is, is, is you know, here's the thing. I've, I've watched a bunch of videos from YouTubers, big and, and small and in between, on the Logan Paul situation. And it's so funny to see, like, who's against him and who's not, you know? And, and basically, I, I, the only one that I watched that was defending him and, and, and basically saying that, you know, that, he, that he's all right was, was actually McJuggernuggets, who, you know, you guys know I have plenty of problems with him. You know, that fucking guy, you know, will suck up to any YouTuber that's bigger than him because McJuggernuggets has what, like, something like 4 million subscribers. Logan Paul has 15 million you know, he'll suck up to him. So that was curious. I was like, well, I wonder what PewDiePie has to say. PewDiePie is the number one guy on YouTube. Now, I understand his engagement isn't as high as Logan Paul, but he has a hell of a lot more subscribers, over 50 million. I went and I watched like a few seconds of PewDiePie's video on Logan Paul. And the first thing he says is, is that Logan Paul's a jackass. And I was like, well, that's all I needed to hear. You know, um, he's been condemned by, uh, just out of the YouTubers that I've watched, you know, Blasphemous HD condemned it. Um, PewDiePie condemned it. I, I'm not a subscriber of him, but I did see his video. Um, who else? Uh, Dame Drops condemned it. Um, you know, and a couple of smaller YouTuber, YouTubers that I watch that you guys probably wouldn't know condemned it. Um, Kid Behind a Camera, who, who uploaded on the Angry Grandpa show, he condemned it. And I actually, I actually liked his video a lot, uh, uh, Michael Green. He did a really great job. And it's funny how, like, all the... The twelve-year-old Logan Paul fans are trying to give him death threats. It's kind of hilarious. I mean, you know, uh, Pickle Boy lives in a fucking mansion with a uh, with a security team. I don't think he's worried about you saying that you're going to come there and fuck him up. You know, it's just stupid. But anyway, um, what do I think of it? Now, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to tell you right off the bat. I think Logan Paul is despicable. Okay. I just want to get that out of the way. I think he's despicable. Um, I didn't know much about him. I've heard the name Logan Paul. I've heard the name Jake Paul. I know that they came over from Vine, that they were very big on Vine, and that when Vine closed, there was what they called a Vine invasion of people who were popular on Vine coming over to YouTube, which is fine. You know, I, I got no problem with that, and that Logan Paul and his brother Jake Paul were part of that. But I, I have no interest in watching vlogs. I have no interest in watching guys in their 20s act like guys who were 15. I have no interest in people who think they're just so edgy. I have no interest in content that panders to children, even though that's what's big on YouTube, and that's fine. So I didn't know much about him, other than the fact that I just wasn't interested in him. Hitomi was the first person to tell me about this because she's Japanese, she lives in Japan, and all of this happened in Japan. Now, if anybody hasn't heard about what's happened, um, which means that you've been under a rock, but that's fine if you've been under a rock. I'm going to lift that rock up and tell you what happened. Logan Paul took a trip to Japan, and the, the controversy came at the end um, where he went into a forest, uh, w which is known in Japan as the Suicide Forest. Now, I first read about the, the Suicide Forest years ago uh, from, from, like, from Cracked, actually, one of my favorite websites from back in the day. I don't think they're quite as good as they used to be, but, you know, I still look at Cracked. I still enjoy it. Um, and, they, you know, basically, here's the thing. Japan has a suicide problem. Uh, for whatever reason, culturally, they are more... A, more apt to um well, that's not the right word apt is not the word they're, they're more willing to take their own lives and it, and it goes back to their history and their culture and basically um there's a higher suicide rate in japan than there is like for example here in the united states uh, per capita that is and uh i, I don't want to talk about the reasons behind this because you're getting into cultural differences but uh this forest has become, over the years, a popular place for people who want to commit suicide to do so. And a lot of them have done it there, uh, who, are, who are younger people, will go there and, and kill themselves. And, um, you know, there's been pictures taken, there's been documentaries and shit, but it's not been a whole lot because you're not really supposed to film in there. And that's part of the whole Logan Paul thing. So anyway, Lo Logan Paul and a bunch of his jackass friends went to Japan. 
And towards the end of their trip, they went into the suicide forest, claiming that they were going to do the 24-hour challenge, which is basically this dumbass, retarded thing that kids like to watch on YouTube, where they go, like, I'm going to do the 24-hour challenge, try to stay in Walmart for 24 hours, or try to break into somebody's house and hide and for 24 hours, or, you know, whatever kind of bullshit. And they were trying to say, oh, this, house, this place is supposedly haunted, so we're going to stay here for 24 hours. And during the... The process of, of exploring, and they, they, they went off the path, and they, uh, they found a body. And uh, they found a body, and they filmed the body, and they showed it on YouTube. Now, they did blur it out, but you're still filming somebody's corpse. And they, they showed it, and uh, this, this, of course, got an immense backlash, not only from the YouTube community, but and, and from the advertisers, but the country of Japan and Japanese people were uh, obviously deeply offended by this for many, many reasons. Um, but I here's the thing about this. I think everybody that's condemning Logan Paul is kind of missing the mark on this one. And I'm going to explain why. And I'm not saying that he shouldn't be condemned because he absolutely should be condemned. But everybody is focusing on one thing that he did, which is film a dead body. And they're not focusing on everything else that he did. And everything else that he did, it, you know, because there are people that are trying to defend him or not not so much trying to defend him. Like somebody like, for example, Boogie2988, whose video I watched on Logan Paul, who condemned the act of filming the body. And, you know, he called it a foolish and a very bad decision, but still believed that Logan Paul went into this situation with good intentions because the video carried an anti-suicide message. Um, I don't buy it for a minute, and I can tell you that nobody in Japan buys it, okay? Uh, just speaking to Hitomi alone, she she's furious at him. She thinks he's going to hell. And I tell you, you know, he did not have good intentions. And I'm going to explain why. First of all, he made it about him, okay? It wasn't that he filmed the body... And then he stood next to it, and then he cracked jokes. You know, it wasn't about that. It was about the fact that he made it about himself, saying things like it's the craziest thing to ever happen to him. It didn't happen to him, okay? It happened to the guy that was hanging from a tree. That guy died by his own hand. And, you know, whatever reasons he may have had, I don't know what they are. I don't know who the guy was. I don't know who his family are, you know. I, I really don't know anything about him. But I do know that when you come up to a corpse, somebody who has hanged themselves in a forest, and say that it's the craziest thing that ever happened to you, you come off as, as a narcissistic, borderline sociopathic asshole. That's what I think of Logan Paul. But that's just a drop in the bucket of the shit pie that he has baked for the YouTube community because it's not just about that. First of all, you are not supposed to film in the suicide forest. You are not supposed to go in there with a camera. You're not supposed to take pictures. You're not supposed to take video. You need special permission. And I can guarantee you that he did not have special permission. Okay? He did not have special permission to film there. He did not have permission to upload that video. He broke the laws of the country. And he doesn't give a fuck. And I'll tell you why he doesn't give a fuck. And I don't care how many times he apologizes. Because first he apologizes and he monetizes that video, by the way. And then he has to apologize for monetizing that video. And he says he's taking a break from YouTube, you know, and this and that. And he comes on and he cries. And once again, he's making it all about him. About what he did, you know, and 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 really, it's all you know. He that the whole body thing that was the, the the cherry on the cake. He went to Japan. First of all, he referred to the country as a playground, and that he was going to have fun there. He treated the entire country with disrespect. He disrespected national monuments there. He um, he disturbed local people. He disturbed the local wildlife. Uh, I saw pictures and video of him. Uh, disturbing koi ponds and monuments i saw him he bought some dead fish some de raw dead fish and and put them like put them on people's cars and threw them at passing vehicles he dressed up like pikachu or whatever the fuck and him and his friends they all dressed up like pokemon and went out and and threw pokeballs at people and at people's 
uh, vehicles, you know, like cars and trains and shit. So he did all, like, every single thing about his trip was disrespectful to Japan. Okay? He treated it like it was a joke, that it was all for views. He doesn't care about the people. He doesn't care about their history. He doesn't care about their culture. He only cares about how he can exploit Japan. And, and that's what he was successful in doing because you know what? Here's the thing. Here's another thing. YouTube never took action on this. And YouTube is equally as wrong because they never took action on it. Not only did they allow the video to be uploaded and monetized, when I can't even say fuck without being demonetized, okay? Not that I give a shit, but if he can upload a videos this offensive and then accumulating in breaking the laws there, going into the suicide forest with a camera when he knew that he wasn't supposed to, filming a dead body and then trying to tack on some anti-suicide message putting sad music over it we know exactly what you were trying to do you fucking idiot you nincom fucking poop you're a fucking tool logan paul i know you're not listening to this but um, i i makes me feel better just to say you're a goddamn tool but every single thing about his trip from the moment he booked the flight to the moment he left was disrespectful to the country of Japan, its people, its culture, and to the YouTube community in general. But YouTube is equally as to blame for this whole shebang because not only did they allow it to be monetized, but they put it in trending videos. And I know you guys don't realize this, but what's chosen for the top trending videos is not automated by YouTube. They are handpicked, which means somebody that was a Google employee in their YouTube division saw this video trending and decided to promote it because it was making YouTube money. And if you think that all the backlash got them to take the video down, that's untrue. Logan Paul himself took the video down, and he probably planned this. He probably planned from the get-go exactly what he was going to do. He knew that filming the corpse was wrong. He knew that even bringing a camera into the forest was wrong. He knew that everything he had done in the trip was wrong and disrespectful and he was being a jackass because this is what eats him up and everybody is forgiving him. Not the big YouTubers, but his fans are forgiving him. Everybody's like, oh, everybody makes mistakes, this and that, but they're not concentrating on the right thing. They're saying that they're thinking it was a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. This is what he meant to do. He's drumming up controversy for views, okay? And he doesn't care who he hurts and i'm not talking about the content creators that are going to lose money about them because i don't give a fuck about them either okay i'm talking about the people in japan i'm talking about that young man's family and friends who may not have known that he had even died they may not have just heard from him in a while and they had to find out that their their friend their son their brother their cousin whoever he was to anybody, maybe a, a boyfriend or a husband, who knows, to somebody, they had to find out that he had died by his own hand from a YouTube video that was made to entertain. Because that's that's what it was made for. It was made to entertain. It was made to, um, to court controversy and to be provocative. And he probably always planned on um, taking it down after a while and then making an apology, making some money off of the apology, and then having to apologize. This is all part of what he planned, okay? I initially did not see the video because by the time I was told about it, it was, it was done. It was gone. And I know that it had been re-uploaded many times all over YouTube because once something's on the Internet, it's there forever unless nobody cares about it then it might disappear. But I did not want to watch it because I did not want to particularly see a dead body hanging from a tree in Japan. Uh, but I did wind up seeing a, 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 the majority of the video from Blasphemous HD, who's a YouTuber that does reaction videos, and he reacted to the Logan Paul video last night, and I watched his video. And, you know, Blasphemous doesn't always show the whole... He never shows the whole video that he's reacting to, very rarely. Um... He, he cut out the parts that actually showed the body, but he left a lot of it in there that, you know, was already disturbing uh, the behavior that they had, the 
the actual lack of any kind of gravitas that they had, that they're going into this place, it's called the Suicide Forest, and they're treating it like a haunted house. You know what I mean? This is a place where where many, many Japanese youths have, have ended their lives for various reasons, and they treated it like it's... Uh, a tourist attraction and it's not you're not supposed to go first of all tourists are not even supposed to go in there and um, definitely not supposed to film or take pictures so that's just ridiculous it really is and I'm not going to tack on the end of this video by by saying oh you know if you're ever having suicidal thoughts I'm there for you and you know and then link to some suicide because it's all like all the people that are doing that which, which Logan Paul immediately did while he's standing next to the corpse. McJugger Nuggets did it. He made it a whole thing about how he donated this and how he... I watched McJugger Nuggets video as much of it as I could stomach. First of all, he starts jerking himself off, talking about how amazing he is. Then he talks about how great Logan Paul is. And he, you know, is like, oh, I, you know, you know, everybody's down on him, but he was just trying to raise awareness. No, he was trying to make a 24-hour challenge video and then and then made an ass out of him. So, but he had already been making an ass out of himself in Japan. So, you know, but I will instead of doing that that fake shit where I talk about how you know suicide is very serious and like you guys already know this shit. Um, I'm not going to link to like some prevention thing because it, it it's so fake to do that. It's so fucking self-serving. I'm not trying to look like I'm the better guy here. I'm just trying to tell you that Logan Paul's an asshole. But I will tell you a little bit about the Suicide Forest. It's actually called the Akogahara Forest. I may not have pronounced it right, but I tried. Now, it's it's a forest. It's it's right at the foot the foothills around Mount Fuji. And they say that uh, since the 50s, easily more than 500 people have committed suicide in this forest. Now, um, they do occasionally go through and do sweeps, pick up bodies and stuff like that, especially if somebody's been reported missing. Um, they, they try to go through it and see if that person can be found there. There are signs everywhere that have uplifting messages, things like, life is a precious thing, please reconsider, think of your family. Sometimes they even have um, warning messages like, you know, uh, you're... you're animals will eat you that kind of thing but um yeah it's you know it's a real place and it, and there's also and an, it's also a dangerous place not just for because you know people go there to die but because there's actually a criminal element to it where um these these criminals go in and they scavenge they look for corpses and they they rob them they, they take their their watches and their jewelry and their phones and stuff like that and then they sell them. So, you know, you could easily run into, you know, like some low-level Yakuza person who's who's looking for a little bit of jewelry there. You know, if you go... It's not a place for tourists. So that's kind of my message, is that Logan Paul was an asshole from the moment he decided to go to Japan to the moment he... Well, he's still an asshole. It's an open ended thing. He was probably an asshole before that. But he was specifically an asshole, you know, in Japan. And, and I, I gotta say... If you're defending him, if you're thinking that defending him is going to make you contrarian or edgy or whatever, you know, consider what you're defending, okay? His intentions were not good. His intentions were absolutely awful and terrible. This is one thing that, that, that Boogie2988 was absolutely wrong on. And, and, and not because Boogie's an asshole, because I happen to think he's great. It, it's because Boogie... Um, is very naive, I think, and he really wants to see the good in something that somebody does, especially somebody as popular on YouTube as as Logan Paul is. And, and the thing is, Boogie, um, when he talks about YouTube, he talks about YouTube with a gravitas. He calls it the platform. He refers to YouTubers as content creators. Like, like he takes it very seriously, whereas meanwhile, I, I don't. It's a hobby. It's not a job. It never will be. And I think that that amount of gravitas should have belonged to Logan Paul when he went over there and made an asshole out of himself, not just in the forest, but in general. You know, like, imagine if you're a Japanese person driving down the fucking road and some dumbass American goes and slaps a giant dead fish on your car. They already have 
issues with foreigners there. This isn't helping. It's not helping anybody. Just because you made a bunch of 12-year-olds laugh and giggle, you fucking fuckboy, I'm done with it. Why Every episode I get upset, and I, I was meaning to take this in a very calm and rational sense, but then I got worked up, and, and, and that, that fuckboy, you know, it, it, it's not about him ruining YouTube or creating another adpocalypse, because I personally think YouTube would be better off without ads. Um, I think that, you know, he, he, he just disrespected a whole nation of people. So, some of whom are my friends. So, I'm, I'm like, you know, it, it doesn't cast a bad impression on YouTubers. It, it casts a bad impression on everybody American. It's, it's crazy. But I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to um, sign off here. I will hope to see you guys soon. I don't know what's going to be next, whether I'll start uploading videos next or whether I'll do another potato cast before that. Um, we're trying to move out of here as quickly as I can. I'm, I'm, I'm working with minimal help here. Like, really, it's just my sister and her boyfriend helping me. And, and it's, it, you know, just, just bringing me boxes and taking the ones that I packed. So um, hopefully soon I'll be back in action and, and you guys can get some, some content. But um, until then, Nick Revamex out.